Buck O'Neill would say that the Monarchs were always a good team. But when Satchel was on the mound, they were a great team. But the thing about Satchel was, Satchel brought out the greatness in everyone else. And one of the legendary stars of the Negro Leagues who took the challenge of facing Satchel the most, the great Leon Day. Leon Day, who was a great two-way star in the Negro Leagues, faced Satchel on four different occasions, winning three of those head-to-head -head matchups against his rival. And in one of the games, they're in the midst of a scoreless pitching duel when Leon Day takes matters in his own hands and hits a home run to help himself win a one to nothing matchup against his rival, Satchel Paige. Leon Day was one of those unheralded stars of the Negro Leagues that you should know because Leon Day was as good as they came. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Swings and misses, struck him out. Top of the second, digging in, Buck O'Neill. Day back to work. Just missed. And a miss, and he's down on strikes. Swings and misses. Pulled the string of the changeup. Back to the mound, he's got it. Throws the first, and it's a one-two-three inning. Now the center fielder, Leon Day. The wind of the pitch. That one ripped. McDonald going back. Pulls it in on the warning track. Satchel comes to the plate. Ripped to third and caught. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. The legendary Hall of Famer Monty Irvin would say, if you saw Bob Gibson pitch, then you saw Leon Day pitch. That Gibby had nothing on the uber-competitive Leon Day, who at first glance, you wouldn't think was necessarily a great athlete. Oh, but he was. Standing five foot seven inches tall, weighed about 170 pounds of pure fearlessness and competitiveness. Leon Day, as Larry Doby would describe, I never saw a major leaguer that was better than Leon Day. I never saw a pitcher better than Leon Day. Day imposing his will out there on the mound. Josh Gibson stepping in now. Down to the dirt, swing and a miss. On to first, and it's in time for the third out, so that'll... While Leon Day wasn't a big man, no one's heart was ever any bigger. He was as competitive as they came. His widow Geraldine Day once told me when he was asked about his best pitch, he said, oh, my best pitch is my dust-off pitch. She said, well, what is that? He said, I would knock them down, they would dust themselves off, and then I'd knock them down again. Leon Day not only threw that dust-off pitch, but he threw the full assortment. Dominating fastball, great breaking ball, dogged determination, and is what led this gentle giant into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Goes down looking. 
to the right side. He gets there with the slide. Under the pitcher, takes it himself, and he got him. Leon Day ran the 100-yard dash in 10 seconds in his baseball uniform. Yeah, he was an impressive ball player. And as great as Leon Day was as a pitcher, Buck O'Neill oftentimes said he was an even better center fielder. Now again, Buck probably felt this way because during the 1946 Negro League World Series, Leon Day robbed him of what was sure to be a game-winning hit when Buck would describe this guy coming out of nowhere to make a diving catch that ultimately saved the 1946 World Series for the Newark Eagles. Now fly ball to right center. Day hustling for it. He got it! He got it! Leon Day makes it. While a lot of baseball fans recall Bob Feller's opening day no-hitter, and a lot will say that's the only time that has ever happened in professional baseball, but that's not true. Leon Day also threw an opening day no-hitter, and he was fresh getting back from serving in World War II. Leon Day and Hall of Famer Willard Brown were both in the U.S. Army and both were part of the invasion of Normandy during World War II. Leon Day would then come back home and throw an opening day no-hitter against the Philadelphia Stars. Got him! And a strikeout for the first out here in the ninth. In danger of losing the perfect game here. And down on strikes he goes. One strike away. Strip him out, and that's the ball game. Leon. Leon Day punched out a lot of hitters during his time playing baseball. And while Leon Day's stellar career was littered with all kinds of amazing feats, 1942 was one that I think he might point a finger toward as well when he struck out 18 Baltimore Eli Giant players, including getting the great Hall of Famer Roy Campanella three times in that game. He holds the strikeout record in the Negro League in Puerto Rico and in the East-West All-Star yeah. game. Well, pick it up. Do no work, I flick it up, flick it up. And a swing and a miss. Two down. Josh Gibson stepping in now. And the righty deals. Swings and misses at the breaking ball in the dirt. Ford got to first with it. In time. So the drop third strike doesn't hurt him. Got him. Day absolutely baffling these Homestead hitters. Ground ball up the middle, little. Two up, two down. Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. Up with it, fires to first. Got him. Inning over on the strikeout. Here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum on our field of legends, Leon Day is standing out in right field. He's in right field because all the statues were based on when these legendary stars were inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Keep in mind that Leon Day played every position except for catching. During his stint in the Negro Leagues, he was likely the most versatile player playing the game at that time. Leon Day was the last Negro Leaguer to still be alive to learn that he was going into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Sadly, six days later, this legendary player passed away. But at least he knew he had finally taken his place in the National Baseball Hall of Fame.